the need has never been greater than right now for us to consider the people that work for us as business partners, not employees. Why is this and how do we achieve it? The times, they are a changing. So said Bob Dylan in the 1960s and 70s, and it's so much more true today. The so-called fintechs are taking on some of the traditional roles in the financial services sector. These are some of the fintechs playing in the banking sector. They are giving customers viable alternatives to lucrative services like foreign exchange, investment advice, etc. Providing customers with the tools to effectively avoid taking on bad credit or falling into their overdraft. Replacing typically expensive investment advisors. Raising the bar when it comes to expectations of digital products, customer service and transparency and providing a really high standard of customer care and taking a customer first approach. And these are the fintechs in the capital market sector, challenging services at all the layers. I'm sure that we all know what Moore's law is about. Basically, it's that every two years, technology doubles in power and halves in cost. This is Salim Ishmael of Singularity University. According to research at Singularity, any domain, industry or product that can be powered by information technology starts to follow Moore's law and doesn't stop. And not to be left out, these are the fintechs in the HR sector. HR as we know it today is changing. Our business models are changing from profit and return on investment for shareholders to wowing our customers. The digital era is changing businesses in many ways that they could not have imagined in the past. And it's also changing our human capital, their skills, their behaviors and how we manage them. These changes are having a major impact on businesses. In just 60 years, 86% of organizations on the Fortune 500 list at the time are no longer in business today. Charles Darwin made the point nearly 150 years ago that it's not the strongest, not the most intelligent that will survive, but those that are best able to adapt to change. The world today is merciless. It really is a case of adapt or die. And here are some examples. Bank of America failed to acquire good leaders. Teledyne failed because of a lack of shared vision and the CEO moved on. Oz Digital failed to embrace change and reorganize the company accordingly. Comet Group failed when cost cutting led to poor in-store experience and bad customer service. Borders failed because of bad assignment of talent and lack of digital vision. Although some of these organizations do still operate today, the original company was purchased and it's now run by new owners. What is needed is an agile HR framework that covers all four quadrants of strategy, operations, administration and legal and governance. This is the talent aligned blueprint that acts as a checklist for organizations when looking at HR becoming more agile. Based on research and experience at Vitality Chicago, an agile training organization, this is the difference between agile adoption and agile transformation or being agile. The difference between 100% and 300% productivity is a result of how Agile is introduced and implemented in the organization. Is it Agile adoption or Agile transformation? Are we doing Agile or being Agile? When first introduced, it's generally Agile adoption and generally in the IT area only. Customers are demanding a different experience when interacting with the organization, especially using new digital technologies and IT is brought in to address some of these demands. 
After a time, however, it's realized that there are significant benefits that can be achieved using Agile methodologies. So there is a move to take Agile more broadly, initially within IT and maybe one or two other business areas such as marketing. It is at this stage that organizations realize that using an Agile adoption method is too limited and a more comprehensive strategy needs to be used. This is when Agile transformation steps up. But this is not as simple as Agile adoption was. This is not just scaling Agile adoption. The impact on people of the organization across all levels is enormous. And these changes simply cannot be made without the full inclusion and participation of HR. Why is this important to HR and line management? This is the general definition of agile transformation. The sentence has three key words, transforming, meaning to change or convert, culture, meaning the values, principles and beliefs held within the organization, and nature, meaning the character, complexity and personality of the organization. If these are going to change, we need deep involvement of HR, supported by senior management. But the problem is, probably neither HR nor these executives were part of the adoption process. Nothing about HR really changed for agile adoption. HR now really play, needs to play a catch up in order to play its role as the center of a transformation process. And that is what we do with the Agile People Framework. We help HR fast track their knowledge, skills and processes to not only support Agile transformation, but to actually help facilitate it. When we looked at the Agile symbol, we noticed something. There is a big blank space in the middle. So our question was, what is central or foundational or core to making Agile successful and effective in organizations. What will help you get the 300% productivity improvement rather than just the 100%? We believe the core of Agile is just this. The C for culture and mindset. The O for organization structure and roles. R for ranks and levels. E for engage, motivate and reward. We'll go through these separately. We start at the beginning with the C in core, culture and mindset. To understand this better, we looked at research. Why do agile transformations fail? Or why do they take longer than expected? Or why do they cost more than anticipated? What research tells us is 44% lack of experience with Agile. Well, that stands to reason, but Agile is learning while doing. Are we failing to learn while doing? 42% is company culture. Agile is a culture change and that can't happen just in IT, just in one area of the business. 38% is management support. Are management still old style command and control? This means that management have not yet developed an agile mindset. 37% is external pressure for a waterfall. Other departments like finance and HR, for example, are still operating with a waterfall mindset. This is in direct conflict with agile. 36% cultural transformation. We don't look at agile transformation as a cultural change. We try to slip it in, hoping it will hold up. 33% broader organization. We've spoken about the broader organization functioning with processes designed with old style mindsets. Another 33% is an unwillingness there are always those that want to buck the system. 30% insufficient training. Is this because of insufficient training or because we're not actually learning while doing? But the important thing about this, 
Have you noticed? Not one reason is about Agile. Agile processes, especially not about organization structure and roles, which is where most organizations seem to start their Agile transformation process. It doesn't. It starts with culture and mindset, understanding where you are now in the organization, where you want to be, and what to do to get you there. So the C of culture and mindset includes cultivating an agile mindset throughout the organization, even in areas that are not using agile yet. Understanding the organization's values and making sure that they don't conflict with the agile values and where they do, well, that requires a deeper conversation. What talents does the organization need? And here I'm referring to the book by Marcus Buckingham, Now Discover Your Strengths. Different organizations need different strengths. What strengths does your organization need to function effectively? How should leadership development programs change to create agile leaders? And how do we go about retraining current leadership? What is psychological safety? And how do we go about inculcating this in the organization? How can we develop lean change management practices that are better suited to agile environments? All of these things are considered and discussed in the C of Agile People Framework IT. The O of organization and roles is where many organizations start their transformation and then wonder why it's not working properly. Agile organization and roles is much more than just a restructuring exercise and new job titles. It's about analyzing the value streams in the organization, understanding the capabilities needed, understanding where value add is and what the outcomes or deliverables need to be. Then looking at the delivery structures as well as the support structures matching people to roles based not only on skills. These are all parts of the different discussions that you will have when you use the Agile People Framework. Yes, there are ranks and levels in Agile, but they are just different to traditional grading. And mostly they have little or nothing to do with remuneration. Firstly, there are the reporting levels. All organizations have to report to stakeholders, investors, tax authorities, stock exchanges, and to employees. Then there are careers. Careers in Agile can and do happen in any direction, up, down, sideways, roundabout. For many years, we at Talent Align have been strong proponents of spiral career pathing. Agile takes this concept to the next level to what in Agile is called a career mosaic. Work levels may or may not continue to survive going forward. If they survive, they're going to have to be rethought out and revamped to better fit Agile environments. At the moment, they are still far too steeped in industrial era thinking. There are different complexity levels through organizations, from decision-making to applications, from people to infrastructure. Competencies, or rather competencies defined by outcomes rather than tasks, are becoming an important adjunct to Agile. The ability to deliver work is what matters in Agile, not the tasks it takes to deliver the work. In a data-driven world, we need data about the workforce. Workforce analytics helps us understand this better. And finally, the E of engage, motivate and reward. This is where all the work that has happened in the other quadrants becomes real. Real in the sense of agile methods for talent management. So more agile methods and processes can be established for attracting and sourcing what, where, when and how. Onboarding with the aim of getting people up to speed or fully productive in the fastest possible time. 
Development, new ways of developing people that are quicker and more successful. Performance, traditional performance management just doesn't work. Newer, exciting ways of managing actual performance are emerging in Agile. Career management, assisting people on their chosen career course, whatever that might be. Workforce planning, this is, in my opinion, as important to the organization as cash flow planning is and should not be underrated. Succession planning is actually about mitigating risk, minimizing the risk of losing key staff and not only directed at management. We look at different ways different organizations are dealing with these issues of agile talent management. What is the agile people framework? It's a framework, a context, or a skeleton. It is comprehensive. It's a process of conversations and a guide for those conversations. It is agnostic to agile methodologies. And it is agile in the way it is used. It is not a recipe that you can get the ingredients, follow the instructions, and voila. It's not a best practice. In Agile, there are no best practices. The best practice for you is what works for you. It is not to be rigidly applied. It's a conversation to be held. And it's not a model that can be implemented without the conversations. Something that can be applied top down or bottom up. It starts anywhere or everywhere. True or false? 300% is better than 100%. The truth is, you really can't be too busy to learn something new, especially if it's going to impact your future. And the cost of not learning new things is much higher than the cost of actual learning. There's a new world of work out there and it's happening at a faster and faster pace. You're either on the bus or you get left behind. I know where I would rather be. And here's how you can get started on the Agile People Framework right now. The Agile People Framework in-house mastermind. Let me explain that. What is our mastermind method? The concept was created originally by Napoleon Hill in his book Think and Grow Rich, where he suggested that when people get together to discuss issues, there's generally better outcome. It's a peer-to-peer problem-solving method that helps mem members solve their comparable problems and issues. It establishes clear sets of goals, not long-term, but goals for immediate action. It's focused on the success of everyone in the group. It's limited to 10 members per group as the optimum number of members for such a group. And it meets on a regular basis. It is truly collaborative engagement that applies agile thinking and values. And we facilitate and act as your agile people coach through this process. At our first session, we look at the organizational balance of your organization from a number of perspectives. The idea is to identify any specific issues and prioritize those for focused action. This forms the basis of the master product backlog for the initiative. How it works, and this is really important. The team is self-organized. They design things to be the way the team decides them to be, not as it's been told what it should be. It's empowered and the members together are an instant and valuable supportive network to each other. It works in a collaborative way. There's a sense of shared endeavor. The group expects honest feedback, advice and brainstorming, and they talk through their problems. They have shared goals and they are agreed up front and revisited during the project to ensure that they remain relevant. This ensures that all members maintain accountability for the success of the project. And there is better follow through and follow up. 
The team is an optimum size and composition and can be flexed depending on needs. Diversity is important to best be able to tap into the experience and skills of others. And as the process moves forward, the team gains confidence in its decision-making abilities. And there is a diversity of skills. Members should have a broad representation so that new perspectives and new learning are introduced. One of the aims is to establish new habits where necessary and to think bigger. The emphasis is on personal and team growth, sharpening business and personal skills. Besides the experience of this being an agile process on its own, the main benefits are a trusted circle of colleagues is formed to help make decisions and everyone is accountable. A confidential space is created to discuss challenges and problems. It becomes a kind of laboratory to experiment and learn. Work is broken into parts and conducted in rapid iterative cycles. It's more manageable and allows products or deliverables to be rolled out more quickly. The teams learn while doing from success as well as failure, which is treated as a learning experience. In an environment like this, problems are identified and solutions created quickly and efficiently. And at the end of the day, we have a more aligned product and a more satisfied customer. It's a whole new world of work out there. I'm sure I don't have to remind you of that. We all have to move a lot faster than before. We have to take quicker, smaller decisions and then learn from those experiences. We'd really like to work with you to get to your 300%. So here's a question from you. What would stop you from going ahead with this right now? If the answer to that question is nothing, or even I don't know, please contact us. We would love to hear from you.